Hey y'all, Data Guy here, alongside the Data Dog Piglet. Um, and today we're gonna be showing you how you can set up and run your own do or Dockerize Spark cluster. So in my previous video, I've shown you how to run Spark locally, but that's just running a Spark environment. Um, it doesn't really take advantage of the best parts of Spark, which are being able to run it on a distributed set of compute engines so that Spark can use those engines to process queries in parallel uh, and make your actual PySpark scripts run much more efficiently. Um, so what I'm gonna show you today is how to set up a system that is essentially that, a localized production ready version of Spark on your local machine using Docker. Um, and this will have multiple compute nodes so that you can actually kind of run Spark as if you were in a production environment and that when you go to actually deploy this into a production environment, it's ready to go. Um, and so you could run this uh, Dockerized Spark, you know, on a compute node that you spin up yourself, self-manage it, um, and a lot of these same concepts will apply. So I think this is a really helpful video to make. It's one a few of you have encouraged me to make. Um, so we're gonna get started. And before you get started, uh, don't rely on just the Spark docs for getting started with uh, Dockerized Spark. It's a little bit iffy, but we are gonna be using uh, this Spark Docker image that is available here. And so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go into our local VS Code environment, and we're just going to create a new file. Um, but first, so we're gonna to go to my Spark Scripts repo and start creating uh, a Docker file. Um, so here under Data Guy Video Repo, Spark Scripts, first thing we need to do is create a Docker file that will actually allow us uh, to create our Spark environment. Um, so here, we're just gonna call this Docker file txt uh, and then we'll know to actually let's just see yeah, we don't even need the txt actually so looks like it'll automatically recognize it as a docker file so it's going to save it as that and then what we're going to do is import our spark base image um, so from python 311 bullseye import spark base and this will ask you spark in the python 3.11 or 3-11 configuration um, but then what we'll wanna do is install some of the tools that ROS will just use just to get started with. Uh, so for here, what we'll do is run, or we'll actually first set a Spark version. Um, so here, Spark version equals 3.4.0. And then what we'll do is actually run and install the, uh, some of the tools we'll need to install Spark. So first, installing sudo, curl, vim, unzip, rsync, openjdk, java development kit, build essential, this will just allow us to build Docker images and just build pretty much anything. Um, software properties common, SSH, and just apt get uh, with a clean list and then just a uh, creating a directory file for everything we're going to install. Then what we're gonna wanna do is set some directories for our Spark and Hadoop installations. So copy and paste, or add this here. Spark home, option Spark, uh, uh, Hadoop as well. So just in case, just so you have, in case you want to use Hadoop, set that home as well. Uh, and then we're going to run, ha make directory Hadoop, make directory for home, um, and then set our working directory to uh, the Spark home. So now that we're in the Spark home directory within this Docker file, we're then going to want to download and install Spark. So this is why we set the Spark version at the top. So we can just Jinja template it. And that way, if we want to update the Spark version down the line, you just have to update it once there and then it'll apply throughout the rest of the Docker file script. Um, so we need to actually install everything separately. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is also create a requirements.txt file. So we'll do that right here, requirements.txt. Uh, and then we'll just add a couple of basic requirements we can use. So IPython for interactive Python, pandas for the obvious reason that we need to have a data storage and kind of data manipulation tool, PyArrow, NumPy, and PySpark. Then after that, we are going to want to copy and install those Python dependencies in our Docker file. So we'll do that right here, copy requirements.txt, copy it all, and then run a pip3 install of everything within the requirements.txt file. Then we're going to want to set some environment variables as well. So here we're going to set some uh, just environment variables pathing for our local path uh, for Spark, our Spark home, Spark master directory, uh, Spark master host, and Spark master port, as well as setting what PySpark Python we want to use, in this case, Python 3, uh, which we're installing, you know, Python 3.11.bullet as a Spark base. 
Um, so here we just have all the spike, or sp not spark, uh, spark binaries and scripts on the path. So it's easier to use commands and shell scripts that you need down the line. Um, and the spark home directory is set to op slash spark, um, which is the same name as the service in Docker Compose that will run the uh, master node. Now, the next thing we need to do is just copy the Spark defaults configuration and just save it uh, on as the Spark in the Spark home. So here, just copying it into the Spark home slash config. Um, and then what we're doing is just setting that the Spark master will be a standalone cluster master in 0.707. You'll kind of see this in a second once we get to defining some other scripts that we'll use here. Um, but next thing we want to do is run chmod and then we'll see here, uh, set some basically set these as uh, executable scripts and binaries. Uh, and then we're also going to set the Python path uh, within the config file to the Python version that we set before, again, which is three point or three dot eleven. Um, so you can see that up there under the or under the version. Then what we'll do is copy an entry point script, which we're going to do in a second, which is going to be our shell script that we're actually going to use the orchestrate a lot of this. Um, so here, copy entry point .sh, entry point, and then just setting entry point .sh uh, as a variable or as an entry point variable. Um, and then we have our Docker file set up. So now you might be wondering, what about entry point .sh? Don't we need to make that? And you're right, we do need to make that. <laughs> um, so here we're going to make a shell script entry point .sh. And then within the shell script, what we're going to do uh, is just get the workload you want from an argument and depending on the value, uh, execute the appropriate Spark script. So what this looks like is basically saying Spark workload equals one, echo Spark workload, just saying what the Spark workload is. Um, and then if it's master, run started on the master node. Uh, if the Spark load worker is worker, then you're gonna start the job on that worker node. Um, and if you're trying to look at the Spark workload history, start the history server to look at the Spark workload history. So this is just defining pathways for us to start various services uh, as part of Spark, but just in a script so we have them all written down so we can then manage them later uh, from the Docker Compose file. Now, the actual Docker Compose file will then need to create as well. So here we're gonna say a new file, docker compose.yml. Uh, nope, not .ym, it's going to be .yml. So one second. So rename this to is appropriate .yaml. So now we have a docker compose.yaml file set up. And so here we're just going to set a version. So 3.8. Then we are going to set up a service Spark Master. So this is that Spark Master service that we're going to create. And this is the tri or the trigger that we're going to use during our enter point. Yeah, enter point uh, script. Sorry, our entry point uh, bash script file. So not enter point, it's actually entry point. And then here, so you can see referencing that entry point.sh script, uh, running it on localhost 8080, and you'll see the different volumes it's going to start up. So environment.spot. Next, what we'll need to install is our Spark history server. So here, what we're going to do is go back to hello bring in the Spark history server, and this is the Spark events log, basically, that we're just going to set to be available on port 180800. And then we're also going to create a Spark worker. So here, we're going to have another line in this doc compose YAML file to create a Spark worker, which will actually be running uh, our Spark jobs. And then just finally define the volumes as Spark logs. So, global logs, I'll just put them as here. And then you'll see we have our three different services, our master, our worker, and our history server. Um, and then you can have an arbitrary number of workers by starting the containers with, if you want to add additional workers. And I'll show you what the Docker Compose is gonna look like in a second, but let's say you wanted three workers, uh, Docker Compose up, and just say Spark worker equals three, and this will create three different Spark workers if you need additional workers on your local Spark cluster. Then we need to create an environment file. And this is only for the purposes of making sure that the Spark processes will run as daemons or not. 
Um, and so here, what we're doing is dot env dot spark. So here, we're just going to say spark no demonize equals true. Um, and what this will do is just make sure that uh, the spark processes will run as uh, will not run as daemons um, because otherwise the containers will just shut down uh, after the entry point script is executed because we're running as daemons, not as tasks. Um, so with that, we are all set except for the make file as well. Um, so the make file is just going to orchestrate all the different steps of the build um, and just let us know uh, for tearing down, building containers, and also submitting spark jobs to, to finding some easier commands here. Um, so what we'll do is create a new file A file, and you'll see there. Don't need to have a dot at the end of it either. Um, and then we're go, what we're doing is just copying and pasting, or not copying and pasting, but you're going to copy and paste a few different uh, commands here. So build, just basically adding shorthand for your commands. So build Docker compose, build build nc stands for Docker compose build no cache, uh, no cache progress equals plane down equals volumes run make uh, running. This is running the actual uh, Docker Compose, or sorry, running the actual workers, scaling workers if we want to run um, our workers or additional workers on our Spark cluster, run scaled, uh, run D, and stop for Docker Compose stop, as well as submit here. And this is where we're submitting uh, any individual jobs to our actual master Spark cluster. Um, so now we have everything set up so we can actually try running this environment. So now to actually trigger this, what we're gonna to wanna to do is just go to the command line and type in make run. Uh, and this will run using our docker compose command, make down and docker compose up to docker compose our image and then start running Spark locally. Um, so this is how you run Spark locally. Um, so I'm gonna give this a second to spin up and then I'll sh look at the sh show you the UI and then uh, yeah, I think we'll cut the video there. And there you have it. Once you're all set up, you should see this Spark UI here. Piglet sees it. He's super happy about it. Good job, Datadog. You did it all. Um, where you'll be able to see just a quick dashboard, look at your different worker nodes, see the address, and this is where you can submit jobs, view my existing jobs, and everything else you would do with the Spark cluster. Um, so this is where I'm going to end it for just kind of my basic getting started with creating a local Spark environment uh, in a true Dockerized cluster. Uh, but let me know where you want to take it from here. What other things would you like to see with a local Spark environment? Let me know, and I'll try to show you. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out. Peace.